Uh, let me pray for us, and uh, we'll dive in. Father, thank you for your goodness uh, to us. Um, thank you for Greek. Thank you for your word, the clarity of your word, um, the grace of your word. Um, I pray that you use your word to mold us into a community who... Uh, loves the rule of Jesus. Um, I pray that we would be under your word, not over your word. Um, give us a love for each other and a love for you and a love for your word today. And I pray all this in Christ's name. Uh, amen. amen. All right. So, um, and I don't have my uh, random number thing either. I just don't have it together today, sorry. Uh, okay. In, imperfect active indicative. I was going to say, you can't see yourself on the video. I know, I have it hidden, so even though it's appearing, it's not recording. Uh, that's what those three little things, that would be just the camera, that would be the slide in the camera, and that would be nothing. So I have it on that, but I don't know why, because I don't have it plugged up, so, but I couldn't fix it, so. Okay. So what's the imperfect act of indicative? Does it have the temporal augment? Imperfect active indicative. At on, at s, at n, at amen, at et, at, at on is what I would say. And there it is. At on, at s, at n, at amen, at et, at, at on. If you notice that the difference between the present and the imperfect in terms of the ending, the present is ace and this is s, and the present is a and this is a, so they're related. These endings are exactly the same. And the first and third, first singular, third plural are the same. That's how I remember it. Okay, could you do the imperfect uh, middle? What would it be? Okay, that's the heiress. So you're, you're definitely, so we're one column in from that. way I remember it is it's a temporal augment and then the secondary middle passive endings. So the primary middle passives are my, psi, tai, methis, ta, untai. The secondaries are main, sa, ta, methis, ta, unta. So I think it would be this. Oh. E, o, main, e, u, because that contracts. This should be e, saw, but you never get that. The sigma uh, falls out and it contracts. Uh, eta, amitha, esta, anta. Okay, can you do the passives, uh, imperfect passives? It, they are so hard. I don't know how anybody can remember <laughs> how that chart changes. I mean, that's yeah. just like, it's oh, it's the same. Oh, it's the same in the present. My um, side uh, tie, methysta untie, same middle, same passive. And whatever is true in the present is always also true in the imperfect. So if the presence, then the imperfects are the same. Yes? Are the imperfects the only ones with a temporal augment? No. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Eris has it. Eris has it. The perfect has the reduplication. And the pluperfect has uh, reduplication plus the temporal augment. Okay, I should have looked at all <laughs> But everything, the, the last four all have some kind of temporal augment. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, John 1, 1 to 5. Anybody say the whole thing? Who wants to try? Okay. Okay. In our case, 
in halagas, kai halagas in cross tante on, kai theas in halagas, butas in in arche cross tante on, ponte di altu again at all, kai chorus out all, udehin, oh, hagiganen in altozoe in, kai hezoe. Uh, ain tafos tos anthropon, kai uh, tafos in te skatia fine, kai he skatia uh, alto atu, uh, hold on, I came, I saw, I conquered. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Woo! First three lines of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, who, who has the first line? Pater Hemon. Ha. In tois or noise. Okay, that's line one. Hagiasito ta onamasu. What's the second one? El Fato. Hey, Basileia. Sue. <laughs> All right, one more. This one's new. So the way I remember it is there's an order of beauty to it, really. Verb, definite article, noun, possessive. Verb, definite article, noun, possessive. Verb, definite article, noun, possessive. That's how I remember it. Uh, so what's the third one? How would you say, come about your will? Ge, ge. Related to Genomai. Uh, so if the first one is Hagias Theto Ta Onamasu, and the second one is El Theto He Basileasu. <laughs> okay, good. And how do you say the will of you? You can feel the discomfort there mentally. That's how your brain makes space to remember something next time. Because your brain doesn't like that feeling of not knowing. And so what, what we do, the reason why it's so hard for us to memorize <coughs> is we live in a culture that just thrives in uh, one click, you know, What's the name of that movie? You know, instead of saying, what's the name of that movie and trying to find it, you know? So we've made space, so now this is what we're going to put in that space. Gene Theto Ta Thelema Su. Pater Hemon Ha In Tois Urnois Hagasito Ta Anama Su. El Theto, He Basilea Su, Gene Theto, Ta Thulema Su. Good? All right. Uh, what were the forms we were supposed to memorize for this chapter? Was it the future perfect? What is it? Aorist, I vote aorist. Uh, aorist active indicative, aorist active participle, aorist middle participle, aorist passive participle. 
middle and past participle. So what's the middle? Sa minos. <coughs> so that minos is your friend. Um, everything middle uh, participle is minos something. So ominos is your present. Sominos is your aorist. Minos without the linking vowel is your perfect. Uh, and there is no pluperfect uh, middle. So if you can remember sominos, everything is a sominos a on. Those are just your standard adjectival endings. And then you add somin, you get your aorist middle, right? And then your aorist passives are face, thin toss, thin teeth, thin ta. Usually whenever you have a, a face, um, it's going to be uh, aorist passive. I ha have a, a Greek teacher I've followed some on the internet, and he said you should think of the theta as a recliner, and you're there, and you're being acted upon rather than doing the action. Uh, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that's his mnemonic device. Uh, so thais, thin toss, thin t, uh, inconsistent alpha for your feminines, but other than that, it's straightforward. Right? You with me? All right, vocab. All right, what is this word? I follow. I will follow. I followed. Yeah, so this, this is hard for me. Um, so it means weak or less. It's a third declension, two ending adjective. So those are weird anyway. Um, and it's a comparative. Uh, so have that. Anybody have a mnemonic device? Hey, son, hey, son. Uh, like for a little while made less than the angels. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Good. Uh, less. So it's the comparative of bad or small. Uh, uh, oros orus ta. Mountain. In, anybody have a mnemonic device? <laughs> Is it in a little Greek boy? Oros. I thought I thought it was like the horse's neck uh, was the word for mountain there. Lafoy is the horse. Okay. All right. Say it again. Aradrin. Arad how do you spell it? O R O D R U I N. Oh, that has to be some kind of Greek connection. You know Tolkien was like massively committed to Greek. So so was Lewis. Um, so yeah, maybe that's our mnemonic device. Oros. Mountain or hill, plain, so I mispronounced Greek when I first learned it, and I pronounced this word plan, and you plan for the exceptions. <laughs> that was my mnemonic device. Uh, Oh, that's better. Plain. Good. Good. Uh, four. Um, I 
uh, mnemonic device? The tetragrammaton, that's exactly, that's the one we should use. The four letter sacred name of God, YHWH. Uh, they call that the tetragrammaton. The grammaton is letter and tetra is uh, four. They have a, a book called the Dia Tesseron um, that was written by a man named Tatian where he went to the four gospels and he took the sentences and created one gospel. So he like rewrote the gospels as one book using the basic sentences. Um, and that became so popular that it almost displaced the canonical gospels. But I think the fact that he had changed some words um, led to being condemned as uh, heresy to use that, so it fell out of use. But that his his book was called the Dia Tesseron, the through four. Dinitas. Power. Uh, oikos. Thank you, a little Greek boy. Alistas, aliste, alistan. Okay, what's our mnemonic device? Aristocrat. Aristocrat, where the best people have the rule. Or arist uh, records and take tapes, uh, the best musicians. Uh, uh, so that's actually the superlative of agathos, aristos. In fact, any istos ending is usually the superlative, and that's where we get fastest, noblest. That's why we have the ist ending in English. Uh, Aristotle means noble. It, it, there's another little part of it, and I don't, I've forgotten what the other little part, but yeah, you're exactly right. Plato means the broad shouldered one. Chradias. Um, what is this? There you go. That works. <laughs> so it's the word easy, and there's there's some word in English that's related to this, but I can't remember what it is. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Radio. Easy. Afirao. What is afirao? So do you see it's apo plus irao? And the breathing turns this from a pi into a phi. Uh, I take away, I will take away took away, I have taken, I have been taken, I was taken. All right? TK. I used to say this was John Calvin's dog's <laughs> name, but I don't think it was, but TK. Uh, it's also the name of the guy he was sitting in the window when Paul preached all night and he fell asleep and he dropped three floors and he died. But lucky for lucky, Paul, Paul was there and Paul raised him from the dead. But lucky was sitting in the window and lucky fell out and lucky died. And, and so 2K. Fineros. 
isn't that a little Greek boy too? Is it not evident? I will surely. No, that's Delos, isn't it? Uh, Phineros is clear. Prosopon, this is your prosopon. So it can mean face or it can mean person or it can mean mask. Pistuo, I trust or rely on or believe in. I will trust. I trusted. I have trusted. I have been trusted. I was trusted. Right? Uh, Didasco. Uh, if you can remember, a Didasco loss is somebody who gives you the good stuff. Ditto me kalos, then you can remember a, a didasca loss is someone who didascos. Uh, so teach, I will teach, I taught, I have taught, I have been taught, I was taught. Good. All right, so let's rest for a second. Um, yeah, do you realize uh, there are 14 weeks in the semester and the breaks usually come uh, seven weeks in or sometimes eight weeks in and this is the fourth week we've been in school so we're kind of halfway to spring break how crazy is that So do you know for a Tuesday, Thursday class, you meet uh, 29 times. For Monday, Wednesday, and Friday class, you meet 42 times. So there's 71 days in a, a semester. And this would be, so there are 42 classes. This should be the 10th class, but we missed two because I was sick. So almost 25% finished with this. Does it feel like that? I mean, it feels to me like uh, we just started, you know. It's like, uh, so, like, I feel like I've been here too long, yeah. but I also feel like I've been, yeah. been here three months. Oh, really? Yeah. Like in a good way, combination of like, we've always been here, but at the same time, we know we just got here. And how quickly it goes, I mean, you think, uh, think about it, a college education is 142 days times four. Um, so what is that like? Uh, 500 and something days? That, 528? 528, 528 days is a college education. How bizarre is that when you start thinking about, like, that's like nothing. I mean, year and a half, we go straight for a year and a half. Of course, we'd be zombies by then, but uh, okay. So we rested. Uh, so review, I'll read it, you read with me. Uh, and they found him and they say to him that all people are seeking you. And he says to them, let us go alaku, into another place, into the tas ekomenos komopoles, into the sleeping cities, in order that also there I might preach. For into this, I went out. I went out into this. Kai Elthen, and he went out. Kerusoing, Ace Ta Synagogue Salton, into their synagogues. 
Ace Halon Tain Galilion into all uh, Galilee. Do you know what Galilee means? The rolling hills? Kai Daimonia Ek Balon. And he was throwing out the demons. It's really interesting to me that the New Testament uses the diminutive of that word. There's a word in Greek called daimon, which is kind of a being halfway between God and uh, us. And the New Testament doesn't call the demons that. They call them the little bitty versions of that. The daimonia. Uh, kai erketai pras auton. And so this is singular, my sai tai. So he came to him or she, depending on what comes next. I think it's a he here. Uh, and he came to him, that is a lepros, para kaleoing him, and ganu petom, gan, ganos piptoing falling on uh, his knees, kai lego nauto, eon thales dunasai me katharisai. If you want, you are able to make me clean. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Kai's blank niche face, airs passive. Having been gut wrenched, or I don't even know, having having been torn up on the inside, I think is the closest we could get to it in English. Having been moved with terrible pity. Ek tenas tas kera altu. Having ek tenoed his uh, kera, having stretched out his hand. Oh, sorry, you were going to get it. Ah, uh, hap, uh, hapsata. He grasps and notice it's a middle. Um, he grasps and he says to him fellow Katharisthati can you hear the pater hemon in toys hagyasthato can you hear that that imperative is the same as this only this is a second uh, singular, you be made clean. By the way, who talks like that in the Bible where instead of doing something, the person just issues commands? Creation, uh, God, <coughs> let there be light, God says it, it happened. Have you ever thought about this? The same God who says, let there be light, is the same God who says, you are righteous. Kai uthus ap elthen ap altu he lepra. And straightway the leprosy went away from him. Kai ekatharis Oh, that's beautiful. Temporal augment, heiress passive. Did the man cleanse himself? Oh, he was cleansed? I wonder if Jesus could fix what's wrong with us. I don't know. Do you have stuff wrong with you? Do, do you have baggage? I've got baggage. Hi, my name's Chad. I've got baggage. <laughs> if you're willing, you can make me clean. 
Jesus says thelo, uh, katharis theti. Kai imbrimasaminas alto. What is imbrimazo? Remember, it's that snort word? Yeah. Having snorted in anger oh, at yeah, him. Let, let me ask you something. Uh, so do you know that uh, Jesus heals people with spit sometimes? You know, he spit in guys' eyes? You know, another guy spit in his mouth? Another guy, he put spit in his ears? Pretty cool, if you ask me. Why is it pretty cool? Because like, that's his bodily fluids. He's got it. And he's just like... Normally, spit dishonors someone, right? Yeah, but uh, this guy. M Miriam struck down with leprosy, and God says, if her father spit in her face, would she not be unclean uh, for a week? And so they w wait. God waits to heal her for a week. Um, but what do you make of Jesus spitting like... Uh, and in John 9, like the guy who's healed can't even, when he tells his story, he can't even tell the fact that Jesus spit and put spit on his eyes and, and a dom on his eyes. And the guy went and washed in the scent one. I don't know, what do you think about that? Original ingredients. <laughs> oh, you mean like, God made the dirt guy. And, oh, that's interesting. Or maybe I have a dom on my eyes and can't see until I wash in the scent one. <laughs> or I don't care how Jesus does it, but if it takes Jesus spit, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like I'm all in because uh, I'm blind. I have nothing... Uh, we read commentaries, they would talk about the curative power of spit. I think that's the wrong way to read this story myself, but. Euthus uh, exibalin alton. Now remember, he's just said here, what was he doing in Galilee? Casting out demons, and what does he do to this guy? That's weird, isn't it? Does this guy obey what uh, Jesus told him to do? He went from living death. And Jesus asked him to do one little thing, and the guy doesn't do it. Is that strange to you? In fact, every single person in Mark that Jesus heals, except one guy, he says, don't tell. Sometimes it's impossible, like the whole city's around the house of the little girl who died and Jesus raises her and he tells her parents now don't tell anybody this happened okay we're walking in food city what happened nothing <laughs> she, she was dead huh? I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> The one guy that Jesus says go and tell is the Gadarene demoniac. In, I think it's in Mark 5. And that guy, Jesus says, go tell your home folk. And it says that guy went out to Dicaiopolis, to the ten cities. 
So it's like Jesus says to that guy, go to Ultawa. And so the guy goes to Atlanta, Charlotte, Greenville, Asheville, Knoxville, Nashville, Birmingham. Like he hyper obeys. So what is the Messianic secret? Well, it's interesting that all the early manuscripts in Mark end, it's, I think it's 16.8 or 16.9, uh, I think it's eight. It says the angels come to the two women and the angels say, go tell. And then Mark ends, at least in the early copies, uh, they didn't tell anybody because they were afraid. And you can just imagine what it was like the first time in that Roman church where when Mark read through Mark and he, ended, you know, he says, they didn't tell anybody because they were afraid. And you can just see people start to throw the hymnals like, what? They got the best news in the world. Because you know Mark's going to say, well, what about you? You've got the exact same message they did. Are, are you telling people? Or are you not telling because you're afraid? Kicked him out. Uh, and he says to him, see to it, to no one nothing you say. Okay, so in Greek, the more negatives you say, the more negative it is. In English, it flip-flops. Don't not tell becomes do tell. In Greek, it's do not tell. You know, it's just the more not, you, the, the more negative. So I'm telling you, see to it that you don't tell anybody anything but go show yourself to the priest and prospero and offer concerning your catharismos your cleansing the things Moses commanded and do it as a testimony to them. Okay, what were the gifts Moses commanded? There's two different ceremonies a week apart. For a leper? For a leper, cleansing. He broke the neck of a bird and like dumped the blood in holy water? In, in Hebrew, in living water. Living so water. He's got two live, clean birds. He wrenches the neck of one and it bleeds into the living water. And then what do you do with the other bird? He dunks it in there Dun and then lets it go. Flies off. And then what does he do with the bloody water? He sprinkles it on the guy. Okay, that's week one. What's week seven ceremony? You put blood on his right earlobe, on his right thumb, and on his right toe. Maybe everything I hear, everything I do, everywhere I go, I don't know. Uh, is it Numbers 8? That exact ceremony is what Aaron goes through to become a priest? So is the leper becoming a priest now? So does the guy do that? No, this is what he did. Hada ex Elthon. But he, having gone out, he began to preach much to diaphemizo the word, to spread the word so that he was no longer able. Open, oh, that's our vocab word from today. Openly to go into the city. So maybe Jesus um, wanted him not to tell because he knew that if word got out that he was performing miracles, he would be overrun by people seeking the miracles. We don't really know why Jesus was angry, but... Clearly, he knows this man isn't going to obey. 
but the truth is, do we obey Jesus? You know, he asked some pretty easy things like, of Adam and Eve, do whatever you want, you know, make babies till you fill the whole world. Don't eat from a tree. One thing they can't live without eating from a tree. Like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, and yet, Jesus asked pretty simple things of us, and we don't do it. We kind of have this stiff necked, uh, hillbilly confidence that is just stupid. And we do it all the time because we're like this guy. All right. So, uh, but outside, in the Aramois, what is Aramos? Right, we get the word hermit uh, from it. He was outside in the desert places. All right. Imperfect of Erkomai. They were coming toward him. Pand <coughs> Excuse me. Right. <coughs> so if you put thin on the uh, end of any word, it means from whatever the word means. Um, from everywhere. If you put tha on the end of the word, it means to whatever the word means. All right. And having entered again into Capernaum, Dia plus the genitive. What does Dia plus the G mean? Through. Dia plus the G is through. I think of genitive and through's got a G in it. Dia plus the ACC means on account of. So this is Dia, that's the genitive, so it's through days. Right? So having gone in again into Capernaum, through days, that must mean after a few days or something. Acuste hati, it was heard that he was, he was in the house. And Paloi soon, so this is Eris passive. This is like our synagogue word. Many were gathered together. All right. There was no longer any. Cora, thank you, a little Greek boy. Right. There was no longer any room. Not even the things toward the door. You couldn't even stand outside the door. And he was laleoing to them the logos. Imperfect. He was doing it over and over and over again. And there came, so this is third plural, so I wonder who the they are. There came people pharaohing pros alton. Carrying towards him a paralyticon, a paralyzed person. All right, help me uh, imagine what a paralyzed person's existence would be in antiquity. You can't move your arms, your legs, anything. You don't have control over bodily functions anymore. What is this man's life like? I mean, people had to wait. People had to 
feed him, clean him. He literally could do nothing for himself. And these dear friends bring him, but they can't get to Jesus. They were taking him by four, so they were carrying him some kind of a cot or something. And when they were unable to carry him to Jesus, on account of the crowd, they unroofed the roof. I can imagine, you know, you're, you've got Jesus in your big living room and all of a sudden you hear somebody crank a chainsaw up <laughs> and the next thing you know there's a hole in your house. It's like, I mean, you're thinking, somebody's going to have to pay for that, you know, and all of a sudden, this, like, paralyzed guy, where he was, having dug through, they let down, and I don't know what is wrong with this word, but people in, in antiquity debated whether or not you should say this word out loud or not. Um, I don't know what they find offensive about the word, but evidently this is not the way polite people talked. But they were lowering the man who was lying on his crobaton. I, I don't get what that's about, but that was the debate. Where the paralyzed man was laying down and Jesus seeing his faith Jesus seeing his faith that's not what it says Jesus having seen their faith says to the paralytic huh. I wouldn't have thought that this man's greatest needs was forgiveness of his sins I would have thought his greatest needs was to walk Jesus thought his greatest needs his greatest need would be to forgive, be forgiven of his sins uh, son uh, child the sins of you are being thrown away. And there were certain of the scribes there who were sitting there and they were dialoguing in their hearts. Who talks like this? Who does he think he is? God or something? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, dialoguing in their hearts why does this guy talk like this he is blaspheming who is able to throw sins away except the one God all right I'll see you on Friday so we'll do 23 a on Friday